How does dementia progress in Indian brains? Are there visible markers of dementia that can be seen through MRI scans? More importantly, are there unique dementia markers in the MRI scans of North Indian brains? Hello and welcome to The Print. This is Akanksha Mishra and today we are standing at the National Brain Research Centre in Manisar, Haryana. It's the only institute in India that's dedicated entirely to the study of the brain, its cellular, molecular and cognitive aspects. One of their most recent projects is scanning the brains of patients with dementia from North India. For the last one year, researchers at NBRC have been scanning the brains of patients aged over 60 and above from Palwal, Haryana, who have dementia and mild cognitive decline. This is the first of its kind study that is at such a large scale in North India. By now, they've scanned 300 patients and their entire cohort is over 6,000 patients. This study is groundbreaking not just for dementia research in India, but also for its contributions to dementia studies abroad. The project is called the National Dementia Science Programme and is a coordinated effort between three institutes across Manisar in North India, Bangalore in South India and Kolkata in East India. So the initial idea was to identify the prevalence of dementia across elderly populations in different parts of India with the same set of uh, scanning parameters and then once we have their brains we can go deep inside the structures of the brain to look at also the functions of the brain with certain set of scans that we can do. For the North Indian cohort we are building uh, um, this uh, at least we are continuing this in the North India and uh, where we have collected almost close to 300 uh, sort of samples which means 300 human individuals we have scanned out of them there are some who are having dementia uh, and a lot of them are actually healthy individuals, which is very important to do because we need to understand what is the normative healthy brain to understand what are the kind of early kind of um, uh, sort of markers that you can recognize dementia in, in the brain. Unlike the other cohorts, however, the one in Manesar is unique for several reasons. Most of the participants from Palwal have received little to no primary education, which is a significant factor that the researchers are considering in their study. The second sort of, you know, interesting part about this sample, which is uh, they are primarily uh, mo monolingual Hindi speakers, though some of them are also bilingual, but primarily about 80% of these uh, individuals are monolinguals, which is usually hard to get in the um, urban sort of areas in India right now. Uh, however, this is a major significant chunk of our rural population. So in general, the uh, signs that we are trying to develop here is uh, I, uh, sort of, you know, more geared towards the majority of people of India who are probably non-English speaking and uh, they, they live in the rural um, areas. So that's the uh, second most unique feature of this study. Dementia as a neurodegenerative disorder has been studied quite a bit in India and abroad. There's also large data sets of brain scans of dementia patients in places like the US and in the UK biobank. However, none in India as of yet. Also, new research has increasingly shown links between the onset of dementia and language ability. In fact, a seminal paper from a few years ago that is of interest to the researchers at NBRC shows how being bilingual or being trilingual is correlated to a later onset of dementia. The problem is that most of these studies have been conducted on subsects of patients that are either abroad or in other countries, not in India, and they don't factor in the social and cultural context of Indians. 
what the nbrc researchers are proposing through this large scale project is to develop an entirely indian database of dementia patients one that actually takes into account the language and education constraints and the indian rural and urban settings that patients are faced with while suffering with dementia potentially our ability to have two different or two or three different languages meaning that the fact that we are bilingual most of us are bilingual may delay the onset of dementia now one interesting question that emerges people who are monolingual such as the ones we are finding is that thing reversed so here is the onset now which we have found in the south india that the bilinguals have a definite delay in onset of dementia so in case of monolingual is it now following the patterns of the west that is uh, more earlier than the bilingual people every week the patients from palwal are brought into the mri building in nbrc and they undergo the scanning process for the project so generally the sequence is last for 45 to 50 minutes because we have got multiple sequences to run on the patients of dementia and also on the normal cohort and yeah there are standard protocols which has already been said that you need uh, several kind of scans in order to do thorough analysis in order to know about okay what kind of dementia patient is having so yeah you need that much time to we have cut that cut it down right yeah we cut it down mm-hmm. so we have got different imaging sequences which image for different brain aspects mm-hmm. to suppress the the csf or to enhance the white matter or through the uh, by imaging the directionality of the water molecules so on different aspects we have different sequences and each of sequence has got some sort of time which in total makes it for around 40 to 45 minutes given the size and duration of the task the students also try their best to put the patients at ease before any procedure yeah so we pre record what will happen with them uh, once they will come over here so we already uh, show them before they come to this place that okay this kind of sound will come and this kind of situation you are going to be in and for this much time so they already know that and here also we try to give them some kind of comfort we talk to them we try to make them comfortable so that uh, they will cooperate and even if they will not cooperate they have the option to press the buzzer if they are not feeling comfortable and the moment they will press the buzzer we will just take them out there are certain things that the researchers have in mind while looking at the brains of the patients that suffer from dementia memory loss and mild cognitive decline this project is actually trying to understand any kind of precursor that we can sort of deduce from just the brain imaging so typically in mri the brain, by brain imaging i mean structural and functional brain so for example i have a brain here right now so as you can see you have these you know this is the cerebellum uh, this is the cerebrum i'm sorry this is the cerebrum part of the brain the main you know the powerhouse of the brain and uh, we typically take these structural scans of this so we so in an mri the structural scans are taken in a typical 2 by 2d fashion like an image by image of a like you know taking screenshot of the image at different slices and then we also look at the functional aspect of the brain by functional aspect i mean that uh, you know brain is like a computer it's a bio computer and whenever it requires to you know fun- like any kind of region has to get involved in any action that area you know switches on so when it switches on it needs more oxygen more energy so the energy that it takes is from the brain like you know the blood vessels that are actually running around so the, there is an influx of oxygen there so what we do is to understand which part of the brain is getting engaged in any action we actually map the change in oxygen at different parts of the brain this is the first time ever that indian neuroscientists are looking at dementia in such a large scale across the country and they are well aware of the need for such a study in this day and age from a society perspective why do we need this science um is that you know 
uh, let's face it, we are going to live longer. I mean, I'm sure your generation is going to live longer than even my generation, so and so on and so forth. But that means that we are going to be burdened by the disorders that are uh, typically disorders uh, of an old age. And dementia is one of the most common disorders of old age, which uh, is going to affect, uh, like, you know, our society in a big way coming uh, in the future because of the simple fact that we are going to live longer, which is a good thing. But it also brings a lot of cost to the society in terms of management of dementia, particularly from the perspective of caregiving, from the perspective of, you know, um, like, you know, health care needs of this patient. So it's very important to invest our time uh, and, you know, not from the uh, not rely on the understandings of the West here. The project is a massive undertaking and is part of larger dementia research work that is being funded by the Department of Biotechnology in India. Every week, patients aged 60 to 90 from nearby villages of Palwal in Haryana pour into NBRC and their brains are scanned and analysed by NBRC researchers. However, the work that's being done here is not just to establish a database and develop dementia research in India, but also, as Dr. Banerjee said, to inform diagnostic and clinical practices of handling dementia. The foundational work that's being done at this institute will for years help develop the clinical and healthcare guidelines on how to treat dementia in India in the coming years. This is Akanksha Mishra reporting for The Print.